Hey y'all, today I'm going to do a gouache painting and I'm thinking this pretty daisy in a green background with the little tiny daisies around it would be really pretty. I'm going to put a quick sketch of the daisy, put in the background and then leave the negative space basically around the daisy to go back in and paint. That's my goal. That's that's my <laughs> that's the goal. There's some little pink clover in here. There's some little yellow buttercups in here along with the yellow of the daisies. And I'm trying to think how I want to to sort of set this up. I'm going to crop this to have this daisy kind of down and in the left corner. Or maybe I'll crop this down so that it is just focusing on the daisy. Ooh, I kind of like that too. Or maybe we go really big and have it halfway off the page or almost off the page with those three little, four little daisies above. Ooh, that's pretty. Maybe we'll go with that. See, sometimes you just have to look at it and sort of play with it for a couple seconds to figure out what you really want to do. But I am going to paint in this background, leaving the area for the flower. So I need to get a basic outline of the flower on here. This is just a Brut Fruner uh, square pencil. It's not a watercolor pencil. I am going to kind of give myself a little frame. You might not even be able to see that. But basically I'm doing a frame that is, oh there, you can almost see it. It's, I don't want it to be there really hard. I'm not going to press really hard with this, but I needed the edge so that I could start looking at this is just a sketchbook piece it's not so I've got this bump that bump I'm coming down into this one right here and then that sort of goes up and out comes back down now I'm going to do this lower bump right here and then there's it sticks out comes in, goes over. Now I'm going to go ahead, I guess, and go all the way to the edge and then come back in and then go to the edge and then come back in and go to the edge, come back in. And now I'm right here at this point. So I'm going to just go out a little wiggle, come back in. This is giving me this sort of deep, narrow gap right there. And then I'm going to go back out. Little ruffle on the edge of that. There's actually two petals stacked up right here. So it, it looks a little bit extra big. Comes back and then it just a little bump right here. There was just that extra little bump and it's going to go zoom way back to here. Come out to the front towards me. So I'm just following this outline. It's going to give a little wiggle. And then this petal right here comes down, has a wiggle, and it goes way back up. And then it sort of shoots over to the left just a little bit. The next one comes out, has a bit of a wiggle and a bounce and a bounce. Now, Mine is actually more like that now, but not quite. And that's okay. I, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as this right here. Now, it's hard to see it. Sorry, because of the glare. Looks really weird, doesn't it? But I'm going to say, so that was 
that's this one right here, bounce, curve. I'm going to come back in here and come across this bit and then go out. So now that gives me my parameters to do the background above, do the background below, and skip all the bits that are in the middle. Yeah, it, there's just a lot of glare and I'm sorry about that. Now, and there's glare on the screen. So I will put a copy of this picture up on the screen so it fills this area right here. That's what I'll do. But I'm going to be using my phone. <laughs> so the paints that I'm using for this particular project, because I want to get better with gouache, I need to practice and I need to play with it. So I have a palette here that I filled on um, November, no, that I filled on December 9th, 2021 uh, with Holbein gouache. And if you want to see this palette being filled that many years ago, I have a video on that. It was uh, recycling an old palette and filling it with gouache. Uh, so I'm going to be using these paints. I need to get them all wet because I'm not sure what colors I'm going to end up using. And I don't have my little spray bottle handy, so I'm just dropping water right on from my, from my brush. The nice thing is these have not fallen out of the palette. <laughs> I still have all my paints. Some of them have cracked a little bit and that's okay. That has not caused me any grief. The pieces, the colors have not popped out of the palette. The Holbein gouache does re-wet so nicely. I like working from dry gouache. Maybe because I like to work with watercolor a little bit more than I have gouache. But I think part of it is gouache is a totally different bird here. It is an opaque water pigment medium. You know, so it is similar in many ways to watercolor, but being, being so opaque and drying so chalky hard, you end up with a much, well, it, gouache has a different look and I want to get better with it. So I'm going to let that sit. When I get to the point where I'm doing the flowers, I may pull in some of the Turner Acryl gouache, which is basically just an opaque um, matte acrylic gouache, but it washes up um, and you can mix to a certain point with what's on the page. Uh, it will dry and not re-wet and lift very much, but it does a little bit. It does a little bit. So starting off, I am not going to get my page wet. I'm working in the Fabriano. Uh, this is the um, Veneza or it's a Fabriano drawing sketchbook or drawing book. Let's see if I go like that, maybe that will, that will work. And then I'm going to put that down. Um, there's there's some colors in here, just a whole bunch of like green and yellow. And I'm going to take some more green and some more green. I'm taking all the greens and kind of mixing them, making a sort of natural, sort of sort of a natural type green. I mean, that's actually quite 
similar. Maybe put a little bit of yellow ochre into one side here. Now you can't see because of the glare. Sorry, there. Now you can see what I've got. That's pretty. So then I'm looking at this going, I'm just going to get this green in here. And I might leave some areas where I'm going to put those white daisies. Oh, you can't even see. You can't even see because I have zoomed in too closely. Oh, wow. Just laying in a, a background. This is a drawing paper, not a watercolor. I don't care that I'm getting overlapping and little things like that because it's just more texture in the background. Gouache does dry darker when you're using light colors and it dries lighter on the dark colors. It's kind of weird that way. I don't know that I'm even going to be using this voice part. I'm just painting with the um, Zen Art Faux, Faux Squirrel number eight round. Goes to a nice point so I can get into some of those detail type areas right inside the petals. And then you can smudge it down and get a nice flat filled up area also. Like I said, don't worry about your overlapping lines, your, your colors looking a little bit messy. This is the first layer. Lots of layers go into this. First layer. is just about it's just about done just about on here first layer now something I'm noticing is that there's a lot of linear bits in this background a lot of linear lines but I do have some spots of darker 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 so I am going to grab a little bit of that brown and mix it with that green. This is the olive green gouache. And I'm going to take some of a couple different colors. Oops. Get back there, you. And then maybe even a touch of a blue into it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Touch of a blue. Look at that. Now we've got this much darker. So under these petals here.
we've got a block like that and there's maybe another little block up in here and on the other side of that stem coming down putting some of these extra little dark bits in just mapping them it's kind of mapping them in taking it all the way down off the edge of that putting a few extra little extra little bits here and there I want to take that dark right into that bit of the flower and into that bit of the flower there's some dark bits up around that flower actually I'm going to take this in just a little bit and make it so I have a better better view of that flower Again, just mapping in some of these spots. That petal needs to come in a little bit deeper so I can adjust that because it needs to be more rounded on the tip. Just sort of dragging some of this, getting a little bit more texture, a little bit blurred out. I don't want super crisp lines back here. This is a lot more dreamy in the background. Because those flowers in the background are going to be much more dreamy. There we go. Looking at that, going, okay. I want to get a few of these sort of yellowy orange flowers in to that background. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that green to put into it, though. I don't want them to be super bright. They are going to just be dabs. I'm putting this color on and then I will see what it looks like after it's dried a bit. Now I know that I want a cleaner orange out here where the centers of those daisies are going to be. a little bit brighter into those as they as they dry they're going to become more opaque they're going to stand out a little bit more I guess I could put the yellow orange center in here there's a, a light green that shows up around the edges of that orange so I'm going to put the that kind of light green in here first. And then I'm going to take the, that orange and it's sort of a cone. Like this.
comes up. I'm not going to worry about the little detail-y bits sticking out. There's, uh, there's all these little details. I'm not going to worry about that until after I've got the petals on. I'm just trying to get a basic setup here. Putting some of that yellowy color in here that will dry and come to the top. But now I need to let this dry. Put just a tiny touch of yellow on some of those, those little flowers. Yellow, this yellow seems to be a bit more opaque than the orange. So let's just put some petals on. But they're dreamy, they're out of focus. And this is just a sketchbook, remember? It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I am going to put a couple lines of this sort of yellow mixed with a bit of the green to give me some like fine highlights on the the stem and maybe on a couple stems that are just working their way around texture Maybe a little bit of that green. Throw that in as a different color for the for the stem. Get these colors sort of knocked back a little bit. painting around where the flower is going, kind of knocking those colors, mushing them together. Just enjoying the process, really just enjoying the process, learning how this works. more of that green in there and one of those other greens and a little bit of blue and a little bit of another green. I'm just mixing up a color. Just mixing up a color. I want to put just like a, a couple little spots of the super extra dark. And then I'm going to just put some of it floating around back here. Just kind of like leaves that kind of go with a few things. They're sort of in the background. Let the brush just sort of do its thing. Those flowers up here are really starting to come together. They're developing. That's one of the things with gouache. It feels like it's almost like watching a photograph develop. If you ever did uh, actual film photography, that was one of the things that we got to do when I was in, in middle school and in high school, is we got to do film photography. It was before digital. You had to take your pictures on a regular camera and then hope <laughs> that you actually got something. I think I want a little more yellow up in that. You had to act, you had to hope that you had your all your settings right. And it was, you know, just the luck of the it was luck. Totally luck when you're when you're 12 years old and you're doing pictures with a film camera that has settings 
and you actually get a picture you liked, you, you wanted to think that you knew what you were doing, but yeah, it was luck. Oh, there were some pinky colored flowers that were in the background here too. I'm just bouncing around on my palette. There's some red and some kind of pink for those clovers. There's just sort of a, a few little clovery bits. Part of it is I'm remembering what was there because I took the picture. A few little, few little clovers. I want that a little darker maybe that blue oh yeah there we go that's getting a little darker now that brightened it up and then this will darken whoa okay that did darken it down I'll brighten it up just a little that's a nice nice dark dark green so I was taking the I was taking some of my Prussian blue it, it got slid over here so some of the Prussian blue and some of the ultramarine blue and some of the permanent green deep and the olive green is what I kind of mixed together here to make that really really nice dark dark green. I'm going to put some of that in here. Working with the shape of the flower. Just getting those super, super darks in there now. So that the flower petals will stand out. Toss a few little lines of that back in here. Then I'm going to soften them up. Right down here in this corner, I'm just going to darken that up. When you are painting, you are, if you wanted an exact representation of this flower, you've already got it. You've got a photograph. But if you want a painterly representation of that flower, you can do this. Do a painting. See, I think I'm going to break that up just a little bit because I want it to be a little bit more A little bit more. And right now, ooh, maybe I'll break that up too. Maybe I'll take that one off completely. Break it up. Just putting some of this in and letting it do its thing. I'm not trying to be too, too specific here. I do need to let it dry now so I can put some highlights into the background before I do the finish on the flower. The flower is going to come together really quickly because it's basically a white flower. So you've got some gray blue and possibly a little bit of um, pink 
but mostly it's a gray blue to use for your details. But I need to let it dry before I do that. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and get some of the shadows put in. I think I will start off with a few of the little shadowy bits on those flowers in the very background. I am still using my number eight round. You do want to make sure when you rinse your brush out, out that you get all of the little water drops off of the ferrule, that silvery metal bit. I have a little bit of this Prussian blue on here. And looks like I've got a little bit of a white. So I'm just kind of mixing those together to give myself a soft gray. And I am just going to put a few little lines in. Just to give sort of an indication of some petals. Maybe a little bit more of that white to lighten that up just a little bit more. There's kind of a little bit of a peach on there. I don't care. Little, just, just soften up those colors just a bit. There. Just a little. Maybe you can put just a few more flowers in just just little indications let the the brush do its thing that's nice now I'm going to go ahead and just start separating some of these petals this is my first layer on the petals so you know I can come back in with with more and I'm not I am not staying exactly the way the my my drawing is here you know oh my goodness gracious you cannot see Let's see, maybe if I tip it up like this. We've got petals that are hidden underneath and petals that are, ooh, got a little bit of that uh, orangey yellow coming out in there now. That is actually okay with me. Let's see. Maybe I can slide this like this. Ooh, look at that. I can slide it like this. Now you can kind of see the flowers underneath. A little bit more of that gray. So this petal here is actually down underneath. There's a petal on top here. petal underneath. There's a petal on top here and another one there. They're a little more detailed when they're on the top closer to you. There's two petals here, so there's a petal on that one. Then there was another petal that's sort of underneath coming out like that. I can go back in and put my highlights back into this flower, so I'm not too worried about the highlights disappearing completely. Let's see. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of that green in there, I think. 
just gray that down just a little bit. So I just pick, picked up something that was a little more green, gray it down. So I'm looking here going, okay, there's another petal right there. And then there's a petal that's coming around here and one that's around out there. See, just, just making it up as I go along, really. Not worried if I make a petal disappear completely. I can always go back in with white and put something back if I really need it. You know, sometimes you just need to let serendipity happen here. I am going to put a little bit more white in that. Like that. Like that. Because there's, there's this edge right here where that green really came in. I'm going to use a little bit of my white from the the Turner acrylic gouache to sort of spark up these flowers, the petals just a little bit, make some of these petals disappear a little more in underneath like that. Get a little bit more into here, but it's amazing how much a white flower really isn't white. It's really all those other colors. Might even grab just a tiny bit of that kind of pinkish color. Just just a tiny touch of it here and there. Kind of purples things up with just a smidge. Gives you a little more ver variety. Doesn't have to all be the same. That's good. A little bit more separation back here. Back here. Want a little bit more of that dark. Bringing that. That petal can go away a little more. I'm going to take some of that white acrylic gouache and make that petal rounded again out there. But otherwise, I think just getting some highlights on here, um, I am going to grab some of this bright green. You notice I'm not even looking at my reference anymore. I'm going to go like this and get my stem put in with that bright green and some yellow. And then maybe I'll put a few little stems here and there just for some movement, maybe a center on some of those yellow ones that are closer, yellow orange ones, little highlights here and there. Oh, that's pretty. Grab some of that dark green onto that stem just so it's more shadows right up underneath of there. Sweet. And maybe even some of that dark green right under the edge. Right here under the edge of that center. I will come back in and do a little bit more detail in there, but first I want to get that white on. So this is the Turner acrylic gouache white. I have a little silicone bowl. So I'm just going to put some of that paint right in there. The paint will peel off of it when I am done. 
I am going to use just a damp brush and I'm putting in the tip of that petal, the tip of that petal, putting in the tips of some of these petals. bringing in that see like that Oop. look at that just bringing that in just a little I see I see some spots where I want a little bit more of that that white. I want it to bring that petal around a little more. You have to be careful. You don't want to end up growing too many of your petals too big, but you can always go back in and paint over this to give you that detail a little bit more. See how those those petals are going to come in into focus now when you get the tips of those petals back. I'm just setting the brush down and using it to give me that little bit of randomness. Ooh. There's a little bit of green that got picked up on my brush. So there's some white on that petal. There's a little white out here on this one. I want that one to be rounded out a little bit more. Some of these petals that are stacked up. Sorry, my hand is getting in the way. Petal tip, petal tip. I'm using this pretty thick because I'm letting it really cover. There, I want just a tiny bit out here on the tip of this one. Letting it fall away though, going down. That petal is getting wider. Oh yes. And then I'm going to bring this, this one back in just a little bit because it actually It's actually one of the brightest petals, even though it's on the back side of the flower away from me, it's still really bright. There we go. Soften that up just a bit. Soften up some of those transitions. Now I can go back in and grab some of that Prussian blue and I can put a little bit of that in here little bit of that under there. See? Soften up some of those transitions. Some of those petals that are underneath. That uh, acrylic gouache actually is very creamy. It's very it's very nice to use to blend in. You're not stuck with just using acrylic gouache though. If you use the acrylic gouache and pick up some of your regular gouache, see? They just mix right together. Okay, I see a white petal that needed to be in 
improved out here on the, the end. And I think there were more like two petals right there. So I'm going to go like this, sort of break that one there. Blue shadows. I'm still just picking up some Prussian blue that's on my palette. And tucking it in here and there. There's the acrylic gouache on my on my brush still. Oh, this just makes me happy. This is a sketchbook practice. It is not a finished finished art painting. I'm going to grab some of that orange again and maybe a touch of this other kind of reddish I want to put the little details on the edge that's those little details right there I'm going to put on here just sticking up using the tip of that brush And then I'm going to go in and just put some dots that gives us that texture. But because I have that lighter color underneath and then doing the dots with a little bit darker. Look at that. All the work is getting done. Now maybe just a tiny bit more of that darker orangey color down here at the base of it. I'm just putting in the shadows, those the the dots that are on the interior. So you don't want to cover it all up. You want to enjoy this fun little project did not take that long. I took a break while it was drying. Whoopsie. Look at that. I've got a little bit of that orange right there. I did not want as much of it. So, but I do want a little bit of that orange. It's a little bit of reflection coming off of the center. Just a little. There we go. So this part right here, I'm just going to soften that transition there a little bit. Oopsie. And push a little bit of darker color in right underneath of that petal there. And coming down, giving that petal there. And taking some of that acrylic gouache with the Prussian blue on my brush, smoothing out some of those petals. A little bit of yellow, bright yellow, tap in here, finish up that highlight, that top color. And then I think, even though you don't see it, I am going to grab a tiny bit of that white and a little bit of kind of a, whoops, I should not have done that with the acrylic gouache first. Let's get that cleaned off there. There, now I've got this color that I can put onto my, onto my clover. just because I want it there. And I think it's too dark back there, so I'll go like that. I'll put it on, let it set for a couple seconds, and then 
that let it dry a little bit more than that put it on let it dry a little bit there we go maybe even soften it up on these Ooh, that's cool so there we go I think that's pretty darn good. I know I have room to grow. I know I have, you know, a ways to go because I have not done a lot of gouache painting. I want to get better at it. Remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon as we play in the gouache sketchbook. Woohoo!